you guys, you know, tried to come up with something for today. So, God said it, it, would, it wouldn't be easy, but it would be worth it. Matthew 6, 12 says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us is one word that stood out because one thing Christ that brought upon the world was for our iniquities, our sins, our deceitfulness to be forgiven. Did you know that as Christ was being crucified on the cross, he prayed for those same people that were crucified on that cross to be forgiven? Actions speak louder than words, and to say you love God is one thing, that's the, that's the easy part. But it's the part where you have to show it every day. That's what we struggle with, but again, God never said the walk would be easy. If I put my all, my life, my love in his hands, he said I'll be taken care of. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Yes, Lord. We experience the signs, prophecy to fulfill, last days. It's not a time where virgins should be held. It's a time to make sure our hearts are pure and align with God's will. That's all I have for you today. Amen. what he has already done. 
was his dying in vain to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, one scripture say, don't use your liberty as an occasion to sin. Just because we know we're free, just because we know he died for us, he paid the price for us, that don't mean that we're going to live any kind of way. Amen. But because he, he died and because he lived, we shall live. And the Bible says, well, that the ways of sin is death, so we know it's no life in sin. But the gift of God is eternal life, so he comes that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So I'm going to be talking to you on trust today out of the book of Psalms, the 22nd chapter. But our first scripture is going to come from Psalms 21 and 7 before you go to the 22nd chapter. Psalms 21 and 7. It says, For the kings trust in the Lord, and through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. I'm going to read that again. The king trusts in the Lord, and through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. He said he made us kings and priests unto him. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He called us to be kings and priests to rule as he ruled, to give us authority. We are the Lord with the lit L. He's the Lord with the capital L. But he's given us dominion authority. And he said that the kings trust in the Lord. And through the steadfast love of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Somebody say, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved in the midst of this calamity, in the midst of destruction, in the midst of trouble. Uh, I shall not be moved. If you trust in the Lord, Psalms 22 verses 4 through 5 says, In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. If you trust in the day, he'll bring you out. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're in, if you trust in him, if you rely upon him, he will deliver you. The Bible says, In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put ashamed. I come to let you know he'll rescue you on today. He'll save you if you put your trust in him. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. You will not be ashamed if you trust in the Lord. If you leaning on him, if you believe in him, whatever you believe in him, Lord, you will not be ashamed. He will make sure that he come through for you if you trust and rely on him. Down to the ninth verse, it said, Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. That's Psalm 21 and 9. Verse 10 said, On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, but trouble is near and there is none to help. Verse 9 says, I was made to trust you from the womb, from my mother's breast. I was made to trust you. Some of us have been doing this for a long time. We have plenty of time. We have plenty of experience in trusting God. But I understand that some of you are just beginning to trust in the Lord. But how can you trust someone that you don't know? How can you trust someone that you don't know? Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to get to know him. Verse 19 says, But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Verse 19 says, do not be a far off. You got to be in close relationship with the Lord. And how do you get to know God? Where is the knowledge of God? It's right here. Word. You got to get in his word in order to get to know him. In order to trust somebody. How many of you going to trust somebody you don't know? I don't know many people that's going to trust somebody that they don't know. But in order to know him, you got to get in the word of God. You got to give ear to the word of God. Hallelujah. Do you hear him when he's speaking to you? Do you hear the Lord when he's speaking to you? 
can you hear when he's speaking to you? Sometimes I talk to Noah and I'm right beside him and he never looks up. Could it be that the Lord is speaking to you but you don't hear him or you don't know that it's him speaking? Can you feel his presence sometimes? We ought to be able to feel him sometimes. Just like the wind, we can't see it, but we can feel it sometimes. Amen. But even when the wind is not blowing, we know that it's still oxygen in the atmosphere. We know that we still have what we need. That's it. Amen. So even if you That's don't good. have a sign, you got to know that he's there because he said that well, he'll never leave us nor he'll stay for Amen. We got to have some level of relationship with, with the Lord. Uh, Eli, I'm thinking about my mind goes back to Samuel when he heard the Lord calling, but he didn't know it was the Lord calling him. Amen. The Lord was there with him, but he didn't even know and recognize that it was God. You can read that for yourself in the book of Samuel. He didn't know that it was God calling him, but Eli, the priest, made him know that this is the Lord calling you. That's why it's good. For you to have someone to mentor you, someone with wisdom on their life that can tell you and help you along the way. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Proverbs 3 and 5. I heard Mr. Orton also talk about that scripture talking about trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Yes, Lord. Trust in the Lord. In the trust in Him. And lean not on your own understanding. Talk to him daily. When you get to know somebody, you have talks with them daily. Amen. And listen as he speaks to your heart. Make it a habit. Talk to the Lord daily. And listen as he speaks to your heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 20, verse 6 and 7 says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. There's power in his name, amen. There's healing in his name. There's so much in his name. There's deliverance in his name. Everything that God is is in his name. Whatever your name is, that is that is who you are. So whatever we need is in him. Everything is in his name. Healing is in his name. Deliverance is in his name. His name represents so much more. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord God. But I want to tell you that as you submit to God, whatever it is that you're dealing with, because I know a lot of us have or have had trust issues because of the things that we have went through in life. Maybe somebody disappointed us, told us of some things that they weren't able to fulfill. But as you submit to the Lord and begin to do what he say do, those things will begin to fade in the background because the Bible says you, sub you submit to God first and then you resist the devil. So when you submit to God and you give your life home to God, then you're able to resist anything that the enemy brings your way. Anything that the enemy comes to put in your pathway, you're able to resist those things. Amen? But the Lord told me to tell you today that the cycle stops today. The cycle stops today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord the God. The cycle stops today. Thank you, Jesus. give to you all on today. I hope it bless somebody. But not only that, but when we come before you all and we give you all the word, you're supposed to go home with those scriptures that we give you. As pastors, we'll just feed the sheep, but it's up to you to eat. Amen? Amen. Y'all don't hear me up in here. <laughs> I say it's up to you to eat. We can bring the food to you, but it's up to you to eat. So you're supposed to go home with what, what we're giving you. You're supposed to go home and go back over that and, and just begin to just feast on that. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says to study, to show yourself approved unto God. He said to study. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
So he wants you to get it for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. But I just thank and praise God for this opportunity to come before you to share the word of God that he saw fit to choose me to be one of the ones that he used, one of his vessels that he used to bring his word.